you guys remember the beginning of the film Masan? Richa Chadha's character Devi goes to a hotel room with a young man where their privacy is violently invaded when the police arrives. Not only is Devi shamed and abused by the police, when she's done nothing wrong, she is having consensual sex after all, but the young man is so traumatized that he dies by suicide. Kya galti ki hai in dono ne if you think about it? They are both sharing a private moment behind a closed door or phir bhi unki privacy itni violently invade ki jati hai just for the sole purpose of moral policing. No legal grounds, no criminal action, just the idea that two people having sex outside of marriage is shameful and deserves to be punished. Sadly, reality is stranger than fiction and what this film shows happens every day in daily life. Kitni baar sunte hain hum as kids in the Indian society nahi. Apne room ka darwaza band karna hai to parents will more often than not ask aakhir apne room ka darwaza band karke aisa kya karna hai? Kyun chahiye tumhe privacy? Phone passwords tak ko bhi suspicion ki nazar se dekha jata hai. As if by expecting privacy, we are violating some truth, stealing some truth that someone else is entitled to. But that's precisely why we need to talk about privacy. What it's defined as, why it's different from secrecy, and why arguments against privacy in India are more illogical and rooted in moral policing than actual facts in reason. First, let's get one thing out of the way. Privacy is a human right. It's been declared and reaffirmed by the Supreme Court, which in the case Puttaswamy case, nine judges linked it to every fundamental right under the constitution of India. But it's still a tricky concept to define because even if you ask people that what does privacy mean to them, it reflects in very different individual practices. So just take for instance that some people really enjoy being on social media. They're on every social media network, updating the feed as per the mundane activities in their life. Some people are on some social networks and other ones just don't want to be identified, don't either sign up for these services or also sign up with pseudonyms. So individual practices to a large extent are different which quite often gives a rise to confusion that what is privacy. So our thinking around privacy and how to understand it has been set out very very clearly and very persuasively by a legal scholar Daniel Solov who in his book Understanding Privacy says that don't take a top-down approach in which you only have principles which are very abstract and can be dictated by institutions of the government and maybe self-serving. He says let's go with a evidentiary based approach of how this doctrine has developed over a period of time by a case to case basis because privacy means different things to different people based on who they are but also differs as to time and place where our understanding about why is it important has kept changing and this is found recognition in the 2017 judgment by the Supreme Court of India in which it's linked the right to life with the fundamental right to privacy as well as every other fund, uh, fundamental right under part 3 of the constitution of India. But still, it does not answer that why do people and why does the certain arms of the state fail to acknowledge, respect and implement privacy. So let's just get right to it. Why do people oppose privacy? And one of the most common and also the most irritating arguments I hear quite often is, well, what do you have to hide? Let us just reveal everything. The government is not evil and if you turn over your data to them, they are not going to do anything bad to you. And even if that data leaks by itself, it won't be of value to anyone. Nobody is interested in your life. I find this very very troubling because quite often the people who are making this argument are making the argument without even looking at their own personal practice. Because the absurd end of this argument is cameras everywhere, in bedrooms, in bathrooms. It means that any person can ask for their phone, their WhatsApp history, chats, their email, etc. All of that can be read by anyone at any time. And by itself, it does not have any value. Here, I think the argument itself reveals itself most particularly because the nothing to hide argument quite often is used in cases where there are not laws but social values which are dominant, which Let's face it, all of us breach at some time or the other. There's so many aspects of our life which we don't want to reveal to public or only want to tell certain friends and not others, right? 
and this is what privacy is at its root it is the ability of people to make an individual choice which may differ from any other person who we can wear how we can look who we can date who we can marry who we can hang out with etc etc so next time anybody gives you you have no, the nothing to hide argument you should ask them for passwords to their smartphones unlock it and start reading the history and the minute you make that ask by itself a person will try to defend it by saying this is not what i meant i meant the government should not uh by itself be prevented from gathering data for public good etc etc here one does not take away from the other the nothing to hide argument by itself does not advance anything except a perverse incentives towards total surveillance by itself it's a argument quite often made for moral policing and should have no standing in a democratic society take the example of the web series made in heaven where there's a closeted gay man karan mehra who has cctv surveillance conducted on him secretly by his landlord and that is used by the police to harass him this is a very plausible example which can happen to a lot of people irrespective of their sexual identity or their gender uh, uh, identification here in india quite often people who are at social disadvantage require the right to privacy in order to protect themselves have a private zone in which their actions are not policed for instance when cctv cameras may be put up in a society the first who will be disadvantaged will be the people and be put under surveillance will be under the guise that to keep the society safe will be the people who come to provide services there but it will also be used to police their movements later on such kind of live feeds are also used on people who are young professionals who do not own real estate and are renting places quite often working women this is these examples multiply as you go even lower in the economic and social strata of indian society which is why the nothing to hide argument and the right to privacy are two irreconcilable forces where the right to privacy by itself should be upheld and laws need to be made to protect it just because you have done nothing wrong doesn't mean you should leave your whole life as an open book for others to judge or comment upon advocate vrinda bhandari and economist renuka sane refer to this logic as a difference between privacy and secrecy um they say and i quote privacy is exercising the choice to withhold information which others have no need to know secrecy on the other hand is withholding information that others may have the right to know for a better understanding of this and for the second argument let's return to the example of masan for a second again kya right tha un police officers ko for whatever devi was doing consensually um in the privacy of her bedroom they had absolutely no right to march into the room and record her on video without her consent unfortunately um this kind of policing is something that we see everywhere from parents in our homes to police treating us like criminals for living and for having the expectation of living our lives in private this happens everywhere um just because koi cheez ek mythical idea of indian sanskar ko defy karti hai that doesn't make it illegal things like sexuality and intimacy have no business being policed by the state particularly when consenting adults are involved now let's look at one of the biggest harms of believing that privacy is the same as secrecy and the government has every right to meddle in your business kyunki tumne kuch galat thodi na kiya hai if you're constantly living under the fear of being perceived as, as criminals wo paranoia hame hamare har behavior ko suspicion or doubt ke nazariye se dekhna shuru kara dega we may have nothing to hide but everyone has things they want to keep private और अगर आपकी प्राइवेट पर्सनल बातों का सारी दुनिया के सामने आने का क्रिटिसाइज होने का या क्रिमिनल फॉर्म में परसीव होने का डर आपके मन में लगा रहेगा देन यू विल नेवर ट्रूली बी फ्री द कॉन्स्टेंट फियर ऑफ पुलिसिंग विल मेक यू फील क्लॉस्ट्रोफोबिक इन योर ओन होम इन योर ओन स्पेसेस 
This is what we call the chilling effect on free speech. You will start self-censoring, saying things, saying only the things that the state wants you to say, doing things that society expects you to do. Your life and your ideas will essentially not be yours to choose anymore. The, res the refusal to accept privacy as a fundamental right and respect it as such leads to a chilling effect on all our other fundamental rights. If people open up and talk about each other, एक दूसरे के साथ आइडियाज एक्सचेंज करना बंद कर देंगे तो इंटेलेक्चुअल कॉन्वर्सेशन और क्रिटिकल डायलॉग पूरी तरह से स्टाइफल हो जाएगा दिस इम्पैक्ट आर अदर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल राइट लाइक द फ्रीडम ऑफ फ्री स्पीच एंड एक्सप्रेशन द फ्रीडम ऑफ प्रोटेस्ट एंड असेंबली द फ्रीडम ऑफ मोबिलिटी एंड अल्टीमेटली द राइट लाइफ एंड लिबर्टी In fact, this is what is happening in India right now, where personal and private chats and writings are being weaponized and used against activists and journalists to charge them under the draconian UAPA and Sedition Acts, where they remain in jail for years and years on end without a fair trial. I know this sounds like an Orwellian novel, straight out of a dystopia, but this is precisely what happens when we. as a country and as a people refuse to accept the right to privacy finally it's a little ridiculous and like to call it out that anybody who makes the nothing to hide argument should be put a question if we have nothing to hide why are we presumed to be criminals and why are we under constant surveillance